Welcome everybody to the new museum here in Cairo. This is the Egyptian Civilization Museum. And I'm gonna take you for just a little walk through here and we'll take a look and see uh, how they have sewn together in one room all of the different periods of Egyptian history. If you come here to Cairo, this is an excellent, excellent way to just get a survey and get an idea of what you can potentially see and also to understand the history. Remember that Egypt has history that goes back 6,000 years, even longer. The very first exhibit is from 35,000 years ago. So it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around that history, but when we come to this museum, you have an opportunity to at least sort of bookmark the different periods. So have a little walk with me around this museum and I'll take you on a, just a five or six minute sweep through, oh, six or 7,000 years of history. Let's go, yalla. So this museum is brand new as of 2021. You might have seen the Pharaoh's Golden Parade, which was broadcast, and if you haven't, look it up on YouTube. Uh, they did a grand exhibition and opening with music and a uh, big transportation for the royal mummies, which are down here. Unfortunately, I can't take you down there, uh, but this has all of the bodies of the most famous uh, Egyptian kings. So let's have a look at this beautiful museum. So here in Egypt, they are trying to kind of uh, renovate their infrastructure and create a better experience for tourists. And they really have succeeded, at least with this first piece. This, however, is not the Great Egyptian Museum, which is the one that everybody's waiting on. It is still not open and it's not entirely clear when it's going to be open again. So come down and look here. They have a multimedia exhibition that's really beautiful. And then let's go over and start a little lap through ancient Egyptian history. So what they start with here is showing you what an Egyptian home looked like in prehistoric times. And the reason that they've got this wonderful exhibition showing you that those kind of homes is because of this skeleton here. 35,000 years ago. It's the oldest skeleton that they have here in Egypt. And along with it is an exhibition of all the different kinds of flints uh, that were used as weapons in the distant past. So as we go around, this is gonna be a historic kind of lap. Uh, so we're starting at the beginning of time. These are all things that are actually genuine. They're not replicas. And that is the thing I'm having a really hard time wrapping my mind around. So now we're at the 19th dynasty. So we're talking about, oh, 3000 BC, something like that. These are ancient Egyptian hose and uh, other kinds of equipment. And over here, as we continue down, this is the one I thought was fascinating. These are actually original and they're little dolls that show Egyptian way of life, making bread, uh, how they did different tasks around their homes. And over here, this is something rather unique and incredible. This is actual bread. And this bread is from 1295-ish, so BC. <laughs> this bread is older than anything you've ever seen in ancient Rome. Uh, the Egyptians had something like more than 30 kinds of bread. And in fact, they were the first uh, society to deal with obesity because bread and beer were the main staples of their diet. So all harms. Learned that from my son recently. Over here, we have some other kinds of uh, small replicas of building and how they used to do their structures. And then here we have symbols of the king. So we, I talked the other day about the Sphinx. The Sphinx is usually a symbol of the king because we want to combine the face of a human but the body of a lion. So they want to be powerful and majestic, but also a human at the same time. Down here we have the Ankh, which is a representation of life. This is here the, the Nile and this is uh, the, the delta, and that shows prosperity and life. Uh, and then these are other symbols as well that are symbols of prosperity and life that the Egyptian kings are known for uh, holding. Uh, let's walk around here. And we have beautiful things. These are all original. Can you believe the colors? That's the head of the um, uh, cow god who was one of the people who helped in birthing. There were something like a thousand different gods so we don't know more, we don't know everything about all of them. Actually I think it's four thousand gods. Uh, here's ancient Egyptian papyrus. This is original papyrus and they formed their own script. 
you can see how wonderfully preserved all of this is. And this is from the 1200s BC. Absolutely incredible, considering that any other kind of civilization at that time was basically non-existent. And here we have different textile uh, techniques here. This is an original textile. This is linen. Uh, and this is going to be from around 2500 BC. These textiles still exist. Linen, which uh, Egyptians are still very, very well known for making beautiful fabrics like linen. And here's the different ways that they made those kinds of, of colors. Natural dyes from things around that they had around the world. And you can see the flax right here. This is what they make the linen out of. And here we have a little model of how they did that. So let's continue on a little bit and see what else we see. So uh, something that we have been learning with Hoda, who is amazing, she's a great teacher, is that there's an easy way to tell if this statue was made during the time when this pharaoh was alive or dead. It was made when he was alive because he's got a boxy beard. If it's turned under at the ends, that means that it was uh, a time when he was dead. But you can see the idealization of the body. They were doing beautiful work on bodies like this. Oh, let's say 1200 years before Rome even existed. Uh, far before the Greeks as well. Some lovely pottery. Look at the bright colors. So I think we think of, of ancient history often as being uh, black and white or simple white, but look at the technicolor so incredibly beautiful with all of these fancy fancy colors and again this is going to be from the 1200s bc this i think is very interesting if you watched my video earlier on the tent makers of cairo uh, the tent making tradition comes from a very very long time ago indeed this one is uh, from the pre-dynastic period so this is going to be oh let's say oh maybe three thousand years old <laughs> So uh, what this was is a tent that they, they constructed to house a, a mummy that was in transit. So here is the mummy in transit. When they stopped for the night, they needed to protect it. So they built these tents. This is leather with leather applique. And look at the fine stitching on that. It's hard to believe that these things still exist, but you can tell that this is where that quilting tradition comes from, that they're still practicing today in the streets of Cairo. Over here we have a very interesting king. Oh, first of all, you can see that, these, that the Egyptian mummies are like Russian dolls. So they have uh, case after case after case, uh, and they have boxes around them. Sometimes there's 10 or 15 layers before you actually get to the mummy itself. And here you have Akhenaten. And Akhenaten is a very well-known king because he was the father of King Tut. Uh, one of the things Hoda was just explaining to us is that he's kind of androgynous. And part of the reason for that was that it was just a way of expressing uh, sort of the all-encompassing power of the king of Egypt. Um, so he's got kind of breasts and a belly like a woman, but the face of a man. So sort of a, the original non-binary man, I guess you could say. He was actually married, I believe, to Queen Nefertiti that you might know. All right all of this beautiful furniture. Now these are all things that were found in the treasuries, the tombs of different uh, Egyptian kings. So we're going to take a little lap. What I wanted to show you next, because I love these small details, is that makeup was for everybody, men and women too. These are all beauty products that were used uh, to adorn the faces of the kings and the queens. Uh, you can see over here a powder box, original powder box, that has the different colors of makeup. So they would wear eyeliner that was either green or black. And these were mirrors. They would shine them up really well to get some kind of a reflection. So men and women both. Uh, you can see a man over here with an intricate hairdo. And basically what would the uh, Hoda was telling us that all of the people in the past used to be bald or have very, very short hair just for hygiene reasons. And then they would make wigs that they would wear over the top. But they still, they would have combs, as you can see there, to be able to, to groom themselves. And then over here we have some ancient Egyptian 
uh, instruments. So these were like guitars, almost or harps. Uh, you can see here in the little display how they're playing them. And then as we move around, we've got some basketry. And what we're doing is we're, we're progressing in time as we move around this, the circle of this museum. Uh, we're getting more into a somewhat more modern era. Uh, here is a clock, which I think is kind of fascinating. It's a, it's a bucket of water with holes and the water would come out slowly. Once an hour, it would move down a notch. So it would mark 12 hours and then they would start over. See, it shows you right there, the hole and the water would come out of the hole and mark the days because the Egyptians were the first people to identify that the uh, day is 24 hours long and that the uh, year is 365 days. Here's another uh, version. This is a sundial. And then we've got weights and measures over here. Very early weights and measures. So I think that's one of the amazing things is just to realize how many things that we take for granted. The Egyptians were the ones that they discovered it thousands of years, even before the Romans and the Greeks. So this is Greek and Roman Egypt we're entering into now. And of course, with Alexander the Great, we have the Egyptians falling under the sway of the Greeks. Uh, so this is an example of textiles from that time, which kind of mix Greek and uh, Egyptian imagery. You can see the style looks almost much more like a Greek style. But the, uh, the Egyptians were ruled by the Greeks for almost 300 years. And uh, Ptolemic family, that's the Ptolemic line, they are Greeks. So when we speak about uh, Cleopatra, we're speaking about a Greek. And of course she was defeated by the Romans, which entered, it kind of ended uh, independent Egyptian rule and they came under the sway of the Romans. So as we progress around this here, let me, let me pop over here and show you an example of uh, Greco-Roman style jewelry. You can see that this is no longer Egyptian style, but my goodness, look how beautiful. Solid gold pieces. And then over here we have the beginning of the Christian period, the Coptics. Coptic just basically means Egyptian Christians. Uh, and Christianity arrived here during the Byzantine era and lasted, uh, actually even up to today, there's still Coptic uh, Christians who live here in Egypt. And then we have the introduction of the Fatimid period. So this is when the Arabs came to Egypt and dominated not just Egypt, but a lot of the Mediterranean, the Coptic, I'm sorry, the um, Fatimid Arabs. Uh, even in Sicily, we had the Fatimid Arabs. So you have a totally different style of art that takes place uh, starting in the 4th, 5th, 6th centuries. Beautiful Islamic style art, which we still have here in Egypt today. And then as we move around here, we're getting even closer to our own time. Uh, so we go up to the 19th century in this zone over here. You can see people wearing fezes. Fezes actually were banned uh, in, the, in the 20th century because they were sort of a, a class symbol. Uh, if you were educated and you were part of the upper class, you wore a fez, but people don't tend to wear them anymore. And then we have the Islamic period over here. This panel here is rather interesting because again, going back to that idea of the tent making, uh, this was from uh, the, the Hajj. Uh, this was something that was taken to Saudi Arabia for the pilgrimage to Mecca, the big tent that they have in the center of uh, Mecca. You can see a picture over there that they used to, the Egyptians used to be the ones who produced them. Not anymore though. And then the last thing to have a quick look at is the dress, which I always love textiles and dress. This is the traditional style dress of Egyptian women. Uh, Hodo is explaining to us that the gold down here that you can see, a lot of times the gold uh, is not just decorative, but it's also class status and it's also a, your savings account. You're basically wearing your bank around your neck. And people here in Egypt still uh, have that mentality, that idea that they should invest in gold jewelry as a way to keep your family safe over time. So there's a very, very quick lap around uh, what, six, seven, eight, 
10,000 years of Egyptian civilization uh, here at the Museum of Egyptian Civilization in Cairo. This is a wonderful way to start a visit to Egypt so you get a real sense just in an hour or so with a local guide, you can understand the broad spectrum of Egyptian history before you continue on to the Valley of the Kings and some of the other bigger sites that Egypt is famous for. It's hard to understand in a certain sense, but once you break it down and you understand the span of each of the different periods, you can kind of slot it all in and understand a little bit better how it all works together. So more from Egypt coming up soon. Uh, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and uh, yeah, follow me on Facebook as well, well where I do uh, live streams almost every day. Ciao for now.